I would draw a model of the atom, but that would be boring. We're going to talk about nuclear stability and the strong nuclear force. So don't forget that what the nucleus is made up of is protons and neutrons. Remember, these protons are positive. So maybe I'll write them like a red, for example, like this right here. And of course, you've got these good old neutrons. All right, well, overall then, remember, each proton should repel the others. In other words, if we've got these little uh, protons right here, let's say this one right here, and let's say this one right here, what should they do? They should repel each other, right? They should tear each other apart. So this right here. So how can the nucleus actually stay together? Well, we have this strong nuclear force. We've talked about it before. I just want to make sure you knew it. So this one here, strong nuclear force. And it's going to be important to consider this right here. So I like how it's called strong, so you know, all right, it's strong. And I like how it says nuclear, so we know it's in the nucleus. Now this force, okay, yes, it is, of course, strong. So that's um, that should be obvious. But the important thing is it's short range. That means it only works, you know, at very, very small distances, for example, in the nucleus. And it's attractive, which means it keeps things together. So in other words, this force is actually taking these two, which it, at, least, at least if they're really, really close within the atom, they are like within the nucleus, sorry, they will actually be attracting each other which is counterintuitive because right we have this electrostatic repulsion, this Coulomb force, which should be pulling them apart. But it turns out, no, 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 there's something called a strong nuclear force that is a strong, short-range, attractive force, and it keeps the nucleus together. So what do we have as evidence for that? Well, one of them is with Rutherford scattering. We did a video, at least on this one here, this idea that if you shot a bunch of alpha particles, which are positive, at some gold foil, you would expect them all to go through, or most of them to go through, at least undeflected, but the very fact that some of them can actually come right back, that tells you that, oh, the nucleus must be very, very small, first of all, because most do go straight through, but it tells you that the nucleus is actually positive. Now, this, this idea of this is called Rutherford scattering, uh, but this breaks down at high energies. So what do I mean by that is that as you get your alphas with more and more energy, so for example, as they're coming in faster and faster, well, then they get closer and closer. When we learn this distance of closest approach, they get closer and closer and closer to the atom until, until the nucleus, sorry, until, well, something interesting happens. Then you end up with this right here. So up to alpha energy of around 28 mega electron volts. Okay, well, Rutherford scattering works. But if you have energies around uh, of this one here or greater than, for example, uh, well, then it doesn't really work. The fact that this right here breaks down at these higher energies is a pretty good indicator that there must be some other force going on that's actually helping to keep things together. It becomes attractive. Now we have another piece of evidence for the strong nuclear force, and it's this in this binding energy per nucleon curve. The very fact that this piece right here is pretty flat right here, the fact that it's mostly flat, in other words, this constant value of the binding energy per nucleon for larger values of A, notice as we go further out here, that's also evidence for the strong nuclear force. It isn't changing much because it's, it's dominating here. Okay, let's look at the stability of the nucleus. This is an interesting one. There's a lot of writing here, but don't worry. Uh, I just want to show you, so remember at least what a general nuclide looks like. It's uh, X with A and a Z right here. So if we're looking at the number of neutrons, we're considering at least what's contained in here. Remember within this A right here, it's the number of neutrons plus protons, whereas this here is just the number of protons. So this Z, keep in mind, that's the number of protons that's going to be on this x-axis. And this one, instead of being A, the number of neutrons plus protons, no, no, we're just going to look at just neutrons. And they call it capital N for some strange reason. It's called lowercase, but oh well. So we've got N and Z. And what happens is this. If a, if a nucleus is going to be stable, it means it doesn't really want to decay. Unstable ones will decay, you know, on their own. That means they don't last very long. And it turns out up to around, well, from the start up until around 15 to 20 here, stability follows this line of n equals z. In other words, this red line right here kind of follows this, you know, you go over one, you go up one, you go over one, you go up one. In other words, for every one uh, proton you add, you add one neutron, and everything's fine, everybody's stable. But what's interesting about it is this one here, as you go larger, so maybe you go to more and more protons, think about it, those protons are all these things that are helping to rip apart the atom, uh, so not the atom, the nucleus. 
And so if you've got more and more of those positive particles wanting to rip each other apart, you need more mass in there in order to create this strong nuclear force. In other words, you need more neutrons to keep this thing stable. So what ends up happening is this. You end up needing more and more neutrons. It's not just one neutron for every one proton. It becomes more and more and more until you end up with a graph that deviates from this. So, so from around here, instead of following this line, n equals z, it actually goes steeper than that. So something like that, for example. So this here would be this, you know, this, this right here, for example, would be this region of you know, stability here. And again, just to go over it one more time, a larger Z means, you know, in other words, more protons means you're going to have a stronger repulsive electrostatic force. That means you're going to need to add more neutrons in order to give more strong nuclear force because that's attractive to keep it stable.